This is Pre-Calc 12, Chapter 4.4. We're going to look at determining restrictions on compositions of functions. And this is looking at the domain and range. It's different from the restrictions on the combination of functions, and it's more difficult. In the combination of functions, recall that we just take the most restrictive domain. This is not the case. Here's an example. f of x is equal to square root x and g of x is x squared plus 2. Determine the domain of f of g of x and g of f of x. The domain of f is x is greater than or equal to 0. The domain of g is x is all reals. The range of f is y is greater than or equal to 0. And the range of g is y is greater than or equal to 2. So if we do the composition of f of g of x, we get square root x squared plus 2. The domain here is x is all reals. And the range is y is greater than or equal to square root 2. If we look at g of f of x, we have the square root of x all squared plus 2. This simplifies to x plus 2. The domain of g of f of x is x is greater than or equal to 0. And the range is y is greater than or equal to 2. You can reason this out, or you can explicitly express the composition to figure it out. To reason this out, we can look at g of x. And the output is y is greater than 2. Since the output is the input for f of x, we can see that all values of y are acceptable for f. And since g has all reals, that means there's no restriction. So x is all reals, and then y is a little bit more difficult to figure out. Since we're inputting 2 into this function f, we look at the square root of 2, which is the range here. Working the other way around, we're plugging something that's greater than or equal to 0, and we get something as y is greater than or equal to 0 as the output. This is the input to g, and we get out y is greater than or equal to 2. So this restriction, x is greater than or equal to 0, does not go away. It's the first input into the composition of function. So we can't remove that restriction. We plug 0 into g, and we find that we get 2 as the minimum value. So that becomes the range. If you can't reason it out and it's not obvious, you can use your calculator and look for min and max in the range. Here's an example, and using your calculator is going to be difficult. So reasoning it out is still the best way to go. f of x is equal to square root 2x minus 4. g of x is equal to x squared minus 6. Determine the domain and range of f of g of x. So f of g of x, we do the composition. We get 2 times, we substitute x with g of x, x squared minus 6 minus 4. We don't simplify this. We know the domain of square root is greater than or equal to 0. So we take this function, 2x squared minus 6 minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. 2x squared minus 6 is greater than or equal to 4. x squared minus 6 is greater than or equal to 2, because we divide both sides by 2. x squared is greater than or equal to 8. We move the minus 6 over to the other side and it becomes positive. So the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to plus or minus square root 8. This is our domain. Our range, if we put square root 8 into this function, we get 2 times 8 minus 6 minus 4. This is 2 times 2 minus 4, and we get 0. 
So our range is y is greater than or equal to zero. Now, the problem with using your calculator is this comes down to square root eight. And when you're finding the minimum value, you must set a left bound and a right bound. Unfortunately, when you try to evaluate any values towards the right bound, it will be undefined. So the calculator will give you an error. Another type of question that you'll be asked is determine an explicit equation for the composition of functions and determine possible equations to create this composition. And the latter is a more difficult task. And the latter is what we're gonna look at now. Determine the possible equations for the composition function h of x equals square root x squared minus three. Find f and g. Let's look at the innermost function. We can let g of x equal x squared minus three. We have then whatever's left over. f of x is equal to square root g of x. So h of x equals f of g of x. What strategies can we use? Bed mass is a good guide. Whatever steps you use for an evaluation are good candidates for your inner functions. For polynomials, completing the square gives you an extra inner function. And remember, combining functions is not a composition. Here's an example. k of x is equal to square root x squared minus 4x plus 7. Find f, g, h, and j. So let's complete the square first. We have x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 4 plus 7. Simplify this a bit. We have x minus 2 squared plus 3. So plug in any value to help you follow the steps of evaluation. So k okay of 4. First step that we take is 4 minus 2. So our innermost function will simply be x minus two. Next step is two squared, and then we add three. So our next innermost function is x squared. Next, it's four plus three. So we have g of x equal to x plus three. And finally, our last step is square root seven. So f of x equals square root x. And our final composition is f of g of h of j of x. And this is part of our answer. Let's look at another example. M of x is equal to 1 over 3x squared plus 6x minus 15. Find f, g, h, j, and k. Step 1. Complete the square. We need to factor out a 3 first. x squared plus 2x minus 15. And we expand this bit. 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus three minus 15. The reason we're subtracting three is because we have a coefficient of three in front and we multiply that by one. We're adding three, so we must subtract three to balance the equation. And this equals one over three x plus one squared minus 18. Let's evaluate. Pick any value. It's better to pick smaller values. So we have one over three bracket two plus one squared minus 18. So for k of x, we have x plus one. Next step of our evaluation. It's one over three times three squared minus 18. So j of x equals x squared. Next, 
we have 1 over 3 times 9 minus 18. So h of x equals 3x. Next step, 1 over 27 minus 18. So g of x equals x minus 18. Finally, we have 1 over 9, and f of x equals 1 over x. So m of x equals f of g of h of j of k of x. And again, these functions are part of our answer. Here's a slightly different looking case. We have multiple x's in our function. So the best thing to do is to look for patterns. We say f of x equals, and we look for the pattern. We see negative x plus four, negative x plus four. So we'll substitute x in for that. x cubed plus x squared plus seven. Then g of x is our pattern, negative x plus four. And that's all we have to do. And that completes this lesson.